I think when you look at the scale of the crisis that is unfolding across Europe, then the answer to that has to be probably not. Um, I do think, though, it's a positive step forward from where the Prime Minister was just two or three weeks ago. Um, so hopefully we can persuade him over the months to come to go further than that, because I'm determined that Scotland will pay, play our full part in that. And I've made very clear to the UK government that whatever the UK government agrees uh, to do, then Scotland will play a, a full and proportionate part. Jeremy Corbyn told me last week in an interview that if Europe established quotas, we should have one and accept it. Um, I'm a great believer that if we're going to respond uh, appropriately to this crisis, then it has to be done collectively across the whole of the European Union. You know, I think anybody watching how this is unfolding and the scale of it, you know, will very quickly come to the conclusion that no country, one country, or no small group of countries is going to resolve this. So I do think that the UK should play its part in a European-wide approach, and if that involves uh, quotas, then I think that's something that the UK government should be prepared to consider. You're seeing Philip Hammond. Um, what, what if he says, what's your line on military engagement if it comes to that in Syria? Well, my answer to that will be he's got a job to do to persuade me, because I start from uh, a very sceptical uh, premise on this. I, I don't think it should be or in fact is lost on very many people that the last time the House of Commons uh, debated UK airstrikes on Syria, uh, we were talking about potentially bombing Assad. Now we're talking about bombing ISIS. And that just underlines the complexity of the situation in Syria. Would you be better disposed towards bombing ISIS than being asked to bomb Assad? Well, you know, obviously we all want to see uh, a solution and an approach that will defeat ISIS, uh, but I'm not convinced that simply aerial bombing is going to do that. What concerns me about the UK government, and we've seen this from previous UK governments, is that we almost see a resort to military action as a shorthand for doing something without any proper analysis of whether it's actually going to help as opposed to hinder the situation on the ground. A Scottish citizen's already been killed in a drone attack, British drone attack. Uh, is there a kill list? And if there is, have you been told about it? Are there Scots on it? Uh, well, I haven't been given that information. There were concerns when the Prime Minister stood up in the House of Commons and said that without uh, the House of Commons had known it, you know, notwithstanding the vote against military action uh, in Syria, that that, uh, that had happened. And I think there were legitimate questions about the legality and the decision-making process there. Has Jeremy Corbyn's election to the leadership of the Labour Party changed the calculus on another referendum in Scotland? If there's no change of opinion from last year, if there's no material change in the circumstances that prevailed last year, I think it would be wrong to propose another referendum. Over the longer term, if we are facing, and I hope we're not, if we're facing the likelihood of long years of Tory government, uh, then people in Scotland may, or more people in Scotland, may start to see independence as the only real alternative to that. Politics has got very nasty of late. I mean, some awful things thrown at, uh, at the new Labour leadership. Um, and also today, sort of lewd allegations of linking Cameron with pigs and the rest of it. I mean, what, what do you, but it is turning very nasty. Well, I don't think I'm in any position to comment on the revelations in the, hmm. the book about David Cameron. Um, I think, though, you know, if, if I can perhaps make him feel better, he's entertained the whole country on a dreary Monday morning, so there's <laughs> got to be something in that. Actually, though, there is one... Uh, put aside all of the, the lewd and salacious allegations that I have no knowledge of the truth hmm. or otherwise of them, but there was one serious allegation this morning that... I think perhaps he does have to answer, and that was the one about the fact, allegedly, he knew about Lord Ashcroft's non-dom mm -hmm. status much earlier than he admitted to knowing about it. So uh, that's one that perhaps shouldn't be allowed to just uh, disappear into the ether with some of the, the more lewd ones. Nicholas Sturgeon, thank you for talking to us. Thank you.